For Karen K. Buckley, quilting has been a personal journey towards greater freedom and self-expression. Today, Karen helps other quilters take the first steps on journeys of their own. She is an athlete, a former phys ed major who works out six days a week without fail, often with husband Joe by her side. Friends say never, ever underestimate Karen K. Buckley's focus and determination. The qualities that sustain her during marathons have also transformed her into an admired teacher, an author, and a great American quilter. When I first started quilting, I actually started when I was working for an insurance company and it was a very stressful job. It was in the claims department. And I said, nobody ever calls because they're having a good day. I mean, that's part of working in the claims department. And I think what I was looking for was something that I could do as a stress reliever, something that was relaxing, something completely different from what I was doing at work all day long. Before long, the hobby became the new job when the quintessential country girl faced a life change she did not relish. When I had to move because of my job, she didn't want to move to the Philadelphia area. And I said, well, what if I, we use some of our money and you open up a quilt store? And from there, everything just blossomed. Her self-confidence growing, Karen Kay summoned the courage to try her hand at designing her own patterns, again at her husband's gentle prodding. She began to earn a reputation as the queen of applique, with clever dimensional elements, beautiful points, and perfect shapes. I want to show you how I make my perfect circles. And I do that, I start with a uh, mylar circle. It's already a perfect circle. It's over top of my sandpaper board. My fabric's face down, and I'm going to trace around that. And after I've traced that, I'm then going to cut a quarter of an inch beyond that line that I drew. The next step, I want to take a needle and thread with a knot in the end, and I'm going to do a running stitch in the middle of this seam allowance. And once I have the running stitch done, I'm going to actually place this mylar circle down on the back side of my fabric, and I'm going to pull on the thread. It'll wrap itself up right around that circle. I'm going to lay this down. I hold on really tight to this so it doesn't pop open, and I'm going to now moisten this again, painting it with the stencil brush and the sizing. I'll slide my iron in right on top of it. Get your finger out of the way, but just be a little patient and just allow the iron to sit there, and in a couple seconds that'll be dry. I'm then just going to take this thread right where I finished stitching and loosen this so that I can now remove this circle. I'll pull on this thread, and it's going to gather and close it right back up again. I come in with my scissors and just put a, just snip that thread right there. I don't remove the thread that's already in. It doesn't hurt anything, and I just leave it inside. I now have a perfect circle ready to be appliqued on my background. An affinity for symmetry and balance informs the work for which Buckley is best known, medallion-style traditional quilts with unique color variations and detailed hand applique. To keep things challenging, Karen Kay makes the shapes smaller and the designs more intricate. That sort of complexity is a long way from her first quilt, for which Karen Kay remembers using just three fabrics. Today, she's up to 20 to 50 fabrics in a single project all of which leads us to what may be the quilter's ultimate fabric room. This is my fabric room, and this is I do spend a lot of time in this room because I get to touch the fabric, and it really makes me feel good when I touch fabric. It's one of those things with being in quilting, we all have this desire that we need to touch the fabric. This is my palette. It's like a, someone who paints, and they have all these different colors to choose from. This is my palette. This is what I work from when I design. Her unique designs are sometimes meticulously planned, but often flow spontaneously from a single shape. They inspire thousands of quilters, like Barbara Shank, to seek her out as a teacher. I have taken 101 classes from her, and when I got to the 100th class, she gave me a quilt for putting up with her as long as I did, but she's an excellent teacher. Okay, is everybody ready? She's extremely focused. She makes sure that you get everything you need in a class. I don't All right, know you're, what I'm uh, doing. you just need to tuck a little further. Tuck up. Oh, okay. This yellow is going to get tucked down inside a little oh, bit. That generosity of spirit means these days Karen Kay spends more time on the road teaching than she does at home quilting. She struggles to produce even one big quilt a year, but she is doing it winning competitions and gaining notice along the way. 
her growth has been someone who could do something very basic and could hardly sew. I could show you the first suit jacket she made me. And I used to carry it because it didn't fit and things didn't match. But today, to see some of her work, it's like the kid who becomes a professional baseball player. That's their dream. Now, she didn't start quilting right away. She didn't know what her dream was until she got involved in it. And that was over 20 years ago. I want to say I'm a more confident person uh, than I was when I was younger. I don't think I was a very strong person. And I think doing this has actually, oddly enough, made me stronger. Back in her beloved Pennsylvania countryside, and some 300 quilts after she began, Karen K. Buckley calls quilting a personal journey, art as an exercise in self-expression and independence. It gives her the strength to remain at the forefront of a group who revived an art form, and who ensure, with every stitch, that the craft of quilting will live on.